Good morning. Welcome to the first Sunday of Advent. I cannot express to you how excited I am to be up here today uh, giving the message in Advent. It is not only my favorite season of the calendar year, of the church year, uh, but I'm also excited about the next four weeks. Cassie and I will be sharing duties of sharing the good news in Advent. Uh, we're doing a four-part series, and since this is 2020, it is going to look a little bit differently. Since we cannot share uh, this amazing season together physically, we decided to get a little creative. And so we're asking you to compile four objects in your household and put them in there uh, and, and set a table so that we can, when you walk by, it'll remind you of, of Zion, it'll remind you of Advent uh, and us here, and that we're all in this together. We didn't want you to go out and buy anything, so there are four common items, uh, and it is uh, reminiscent of the four themes of, of each week. So the first week this week is prepare the way, and it would be a bowl. The second week is prepare the truth, and it would be a newspaper. Uh, the third week is going to be prepare the heart, and that'll be a towel. And the fourth week is prepare the life, which would be a lamp. Each Sunday is going to feature the four main players of Advent, Gabriel, Joseph, Mary, and then us. And linking them all together is Advent's main theme, Heneni. And again, there'll be more on that to come. And I believe Leslie Poppin has an announcement as well. Good morning. Just some information on things happening during Advent here at Zion. We have 15 families participating in our Advent faith formation called Joy to the World. And this resource is being delivered today. And um, then the kids will be ready to go along with the, what's in the bag and um, an email that has all kinds of cool videos and projects and things like that. Wednesday nights, we're offering a short midweek worship. Um, it will be online at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, or you can watch it anytime <clears throat> after that. We will be using elements of the Joy to the World family resource in that worship so that all can be learning together. And finally, as a Zion outreach to um, our community, our worship committee is going to be delivering Advent bags, which will contain, contain candles and a devotional to um, various senior living facilities in our community. And we want you to know that any Zion members who would also like to receive this resource um, should contact the church office by phone or by email or by Facebook message this week and we will get that out to you in the next few days. Thank you. Let us come together in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading will be from the book of Isaiah, beginning, or in the 64th chapter, beginning with verse 1. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From the ages past, no one has heard. No ear has perceived. No eye has, been any, has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today will be Psalm 80. We'll read it responsibly by verse. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. You had fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the of our neighbors, and our right hands laugh at us in scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 through 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you, for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gifts as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to 
Our gospel lesson comes from St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Will you please stand? Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the four ends of the earth and the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Hineni. So I've mentioned this word a few times, and I know what some of you are thinking, like, what is he saying? What is this word? What language is this? So hineni is the Hebrew word that we see a handful of times in the Bible. And we translate hineni in our Bibles as, here I am. You see it in Exodus when Moses is standing in front of the burning bush. And God calls out to him, and Moses says, hineni, here I am. Abraham, as he's going up the mountain, thinking he's just about to sacrifice his son, God calls out to him, and Abraham says, Hineni. Or when Samuel is woken in the night, and Eli tells him, It's not I who is calling you, it's the Lord. God calls to him, and Samuel says, Hineni, here I am, Lord. But the word itself is better translated than that. It's bigger than that. A better translation of Hineni is, Whatever it is you're about to ask of me, I am already in agreement. Whatever you're about to ask, it's a yes. I'm not going to make any excuses for myself. I'm not going to count the costs in any. Here I am. Yes. Without knowing what I'm saying yes to, yes. So I want you to be thinking about Hineni now and throughout Advent. We're in anticipation of the coming of Christ. And a lot of churches will focus on being on the message to prepare, this message of prepare. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're going to be doing that quite a bit. We need to prepare. We need to prepare for the birth of Christ. But that preparedness needs to be ready to go somewhere. That preparedness of being prepared, that births our willingness to raise our hand and say, Heneni, here I am. You called, and I'm ready. You ask, whom shall I send? And I say, here I am, Lord, in any. Send me. I'm ready. I'm prepared. But there is a slight difference between being ready and being prepared. Being ready has a certain amount of anticipation that comes along with it. It's like, I'm ready, in eagerness. A willingness to throw our nets over the side of the boat. A hunger and a desire for food, being ready for supper. But being prepared? Being prepared is something completely different. That requires work. It's not just throwing your nets over the side, but being prepared when those nets are filled. It's not just being ready for supper when you're hungry. It's making the food. It's first washing your hands in preparation to eat. In order to say Heneni, 
in order to, we need to be able to put our yes out on the table. And that requires some prep work. It requires us to prepare the way. And so here we are, filling our jars, filling our vessels. If you remember from last week, the message, we need to fill our jars up. We need to prepare the way, and then we need to be able to do something with it. It's not enough to be prepared. We need to do something with it. We need to put our yes on the table and be ready to say Heneni when the Lord calls. I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to scream Heneni at the top of my lungs. Yes, here I am, Lord. But if I first haven't prepared the way, then I'm not going to be able to pull those fish into the boat. I'm not going to be ready for supper. That's why we chose the wash basin as our first symbol for this week. The wash basin is the symbol for preparing the way, of putting in the work first so that we're able to answer God when he calls. Washing our hands before a meal is truly the only new normal that I want to take into 2021. And truly, it should have been the old normal. And I pray, I pray it will continue after COVID is long gone. We set the table first and with the wash basin. This is the first step toward true preparedness. And when we do, when we wash our hands, I want you to think of my absolute favorite angel, Gabriel. So when we look at Gabriel, when we look at how he appeared to different people, we can glimpse something of God's great love for us. We see how God continues to do good by us by sending his angels to care for us and to prepare the way, but to prepare the way for him. And all of this can help us draw closer to God during Advent and beyond. So I see Gabriel as this energetic, ready-to-serve kind of angel. He embodies the idea of Hineni. We first see Gabriel in the Old Testament, expressing God's love to a man that you'd sympathize with if, you, if you've ever felt worried about your future or about the fate of the world. Gabriel first appeared to the prophet Daniel, Daniel had this gift of interpreting other people's dreams, but he became terrified and powerless to understand these horrific visions of his own. It spoke of dark times and a nightmarish vision of God's people. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 21, it states that Gabriel eagerly accepts his mission by coming to Daniel, quote, in rapid flight and appearing to him three times. He enthusiastically approves, or excuse me, he enthusiastically conveys God's approval. You are beloved, he assures Daniel, more than once. And with a gentle touch, he strengthens this trembling human to stand up and receive the insights that he so desperately seeks. Essentially, the message that Gabriel brings Daniel is one that we need ourselves today. Whatever dark headlines are out there, terrorist attacks or natural disasters or the pandemic, we're in the hands of a loving and all-powerful God. Daniel couldn't foresee just how God's kingdom would break into the world, but with the gifts that Gabriel brought him, he could live in peace and patient endurance with a secure hope for the future. Fear not, beloved, Gabriel assured him. You are safe. Take courage and be strong. Daniel chapter 10, verse 19. Prepare the way. Christ is coming. Put in the work now so that when God calls, you can answer, Heneni, here I am. Yes, without knowing what you're about to ask or without knowing what I'm saying yes to, Heneni. In the New Testament, Gabriel appears by name to two people, Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. But in some traditions, he's also credited to appearing to Joseph in his dreams and then part of the choirs of angels 
and to the shepherds on the hill outside of Bethlehem. So imagine for just a moment what Gabriel might have been thinking. As I said, he seemed very eager, a very eager participant in when he appeared to Daniel in rapid flight and on multiple occasions. He appeared there with a message of strength and hope for the future. A future that is not realized until here in the New Testament. It is the ultimate payoff for everything that in the Old Testament had set the world up for. Everything in the Old Testament is an opportunity to be prepared. God continues to teach through the prophets, pleading with God's people to prepare. Christ is coming. Put in the work now. Can you imagine Gabriel's excitement? Who will go? Whom shall God send? To bring the good news. Who will herald Christ's coming to the world? Gabriel is there, excited, eager, prepared. Hineni, send me. Or was it excitement? Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Whomever believes in him that phrase that leaves room for the realization that some will not. Some will not believe in him. God knew what he was doing when he was sending Jesus, meaning that he knew he would not be accepted by the Nazarenes. He knew he would be flogged almost to death. He knew he would be nailed to the cross. He knew the price that needed paying and yet the payout was worth it. The payout was love. God understood that. It is safe to assume that Gabriel knew that as well. Your lives are on the line. The light is coming into the world. Do you understand what that means? Do you understand what that means? No. He is coming to save you and you will kill him for it. If you understood if you only understood. It's safe to say that Gabriel at least in part understood that. Part of preparing the way is understanding that it could all go south. It could all go wrong. And it's not our will, but God's will be done. Whatever information he had, if he had some, if he had none, he said, send me, Hineni, yes. Without question, without knowing all of the information, without knowing the total of what you're going to ask me, yes, here I am. From this perspective, the interaction between Gabriel and Zechariah in the temple took on a different feeling. Zechariah is a priest who serves at the temple where God reveals his glory on earth. When Gabriel comes to him, Zechariah is offering the evening incense just one doorway away from the holiest of holies, which is entered only once a year by the high priest. Zechariah is as close to God's presence as mortals can get on earth. And after Gabriel dispenses with the familiar, do not be afraid, there comes these simple words, your prayer has been heard. But which prayer? The prayer he was saying as part of the traditional liturgy, the ancient longing of the people for the arrival of the Messiah, the deliberation, the salvation, or the prayer that he no doubt carried with him into that holy place, his own personal unfulfilled longing for a child. Both, it seems, or this son of his, John, will be the predecessor of the Messiah. John the Baptist, a prophet who will literally preach on Isaiah's text, prepare the way for the Lord, make his paths straight. And then comes this moment, Zechariah, right there in the holies of holies, at the heart of ancient faithfulness, shows his flickering doubt of what is happening right before his eyes. He was ready, but he wasn't prepared. He did not eagerly say Hineni in that moment. 
Instead, he wants a sign. How will I know this to be true? Suddenly, this angel, who was so gentle and encouraging with Daniel, turns severe. No praise, no beloveds, but a stern, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. Luke chapter 1, verse 19. It's not me you're disbelieving, Gabriel implies. It's not me that you're, pre you're not prepared to say yes to. Zechariah hadn't prepared the way in his own life. He wasn't prepared, if you only understood. And for that, Gabriel hits the mute button. Zechariah won't be able to speak again until John is born. Ask for a sign and be careful. You might just get one. Be prepared for the answer. As Gabriel speaks to Zechariah, we immediately see the implications for the elderly couple and for the days to come. As birth follows birth, as promise follows promise, as Savior follows prophet. But what about us, some 2,000 years removed from this scene? Those echoes that began with Abraham and Sarah which carry through this holy moment and on into the future. Can we hear them today? Do we take Zechariah's lack of preparation to heart? Are we prepared for the good news? After all, Advent is not, an, not, it's not only a four-week-long season of preparation for Christmas or a delay in waiting time. Advent reminds us that even though Christmas has come, we're still waiting. The perfection of history, the completion of these promises of Christmas and Easter, has not yet happened. We still live in a time whose yearnings could very well be realized in the words of Isaiah. That there will come a time when we beat our swords into plowshares, or our spears into pruning hooks, and not lift up a sword or learn war anymore. The Prince of Peace has been born. And we have this first glimpse of that peace in our lives. But perfected peace? The end of war? It is a hope which we still long for. What is it that we hear in Gabriel's message today? that points the way forward for us in the future? What is it that we can learn from Gabriel's eager witness that can help us prepare the way? Understand this. Jesus doesn't need our ability. He needs our availability. Have we prepared the way and opened up space in our own lives for Hineni? It's not a negotiation where Christ calls and we say, yeah, yeah, but I'm busy on Tuesday. Or I can do part of it. You know, are we able to do just some of it? No. It's putting your yes on the table before the conversation even starts. Yes. What do you need of me? Hineni. By preparing the way, by saying Hineni to God, we have example after example of him doing wondrous things with our faith. We have example after example of God's work fulfilled in us. And with that comes a promise made by God. There is one time in your Bible where God says Hineni to you. We have multiple examples where, where we say Hineni to God, where we say yes to God, but there is only one, one, one time in our Bible where God says Hineni to you. Isaiah 58 verse 6 says this, Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every chain? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and not turn away from your own flesh and blood. Essentially, he says, when you get busy doing God's work and not your own, 
Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here I am. Hineni. Whatever it is you're about to ask of me, I am already in agreement. He's washed his hands. He's prepared the way. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And whom will go? And I said, Here I am, Lord. Send me. Hineni. Amen.
Thank you. Will you please stand as we recite the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O God. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O God. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, or other invisible illnesses. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O God. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. As one, let us come together and pray as God has taught us to. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is, Come Thou Long-Expected Jesus.
Go in peace. Prepare the way for the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.